Hi there, and welcome to Thursdays with Annette. As you see, I'm in my kitchen, I'm in my fizzy place, and today I'm gonna to make you one of my family's favorite treats, and that's the white mud cake with blueberries. It is just delicious. And if you do like white chocolate, then this is gonna be something you're gonna to wanna to make for sure. So last week, we did the Chinese beef, had lots and lots of lovely feedback from that. And we have three gorgeous girls that won the book, which is book five, and that is Gloria Fishman, Vicky Beams, and Jenny Diva, or Diver, depending how you wanna call it. Anyway, congratulations girls, you've got a personally signed copy of book five coming your way soon. So this week's recipe is out of this fabulous cookbook, number four, and this is the recipe right here. Now, it's a really, really easy recipe. A lot of people go, oh, mud cake, you know, is it a lot of work? Seriously, why would you ever buy a packet mix when you have my simple recipes? So let's go over the ingredients because I've got a feeling you're gonna wanna make it. So we start with 110 grams of good quality cooking chocolate, and it's the white chocolate, of course. You have 60 grams or four tablespoons of fluorolite margarine. You've got a cup of sugar. Now, when you think about a mud cake, this is probably the most sugar I put in any of my cakes. And that's because with a mud cake, that sugar is gonna make it dense and it's exactly what you expect with a mud cake. So, I mean, in a normal mud cake, you probably have two cups of sugar and lots of other stuff as well. raising here because you want it to be dense so you don't want it rising high so remember it's plain flour and then for the icing it's um, three quarters of a cup of icing sugar sifted we've got um, five grams or a teaspoon of fluorolite margarine and a couple of teaspoons of milk and I've also got five grams of white chocolate that I've grated to sprinkle on the top so let's get started okay so the first thing you do and this is where I say to you how easy are my recipes Basically what you do is you put your sugar in, the white chocolate, see and I've broken it up into the little cubes. You put in the water, which is three quarters of a cup, and then the margarine. So there is your first level. All right, let me put these over in the dishwasher, uh, in the sink. All right, so now what you do is you put the bowl into the microwave and I'm gonna do it for two minutes. Now the key with it is that you want the microwave to be on medium low, okay? So that way you're not gonna burn the chocolate. So on my um, microwave, to do medium low, it's number four, because it goes from one to ten so just to give you an idea that's what I call that so we're going to do it for two minutes now what I want to do is I love showing you little things that I do that maybe you don't know about so when you do your your cake tin this is my cake tin oh my cake tin you know you always start by spraying it with the cooking spray okay but and that's how I tell you to do in the recipe okay but if you're a little bit concerned and worried about your cake sticking then the way to completely be safe is using baking paper. So let me show you how I work out how to do it easy. So you get a piece of paper, and you're thinking, oh, how do I get that circle right? What I do is I fold it over in half, then I fold it in half again, so I've got that nice point. Now I turn the cake tin over and with the point I find the centre of the cake tin and then I press it around so I get an indent, sharp scissors and then go in a little bit more than what the indent is and just cut it and you should have a perfect round shape. Now, don't worry if you don't go all the way to the edge. I was showing Diane this this morning. She said, oh no, look at the edge. I go, look, it's really not a big deal because I've got the spray on there already, okay? But where the problem often is this cake is this centre bit here. That's when often it can stick. 
So I find if you really want it, you know, if it's a special occasion and you really don't want it to be messed up, then just put a little bit in and as I said, just do the cut out like I showed you and you're good to go. So our tin's ready, I'll just pop that there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the white chocolate out and I'm going to give it a stir and chuck it back in for another minute. Always remember we're doing it on medium low. So what you're doing is you're going to mix all that up. I mean, you know, there's no creaming in this recipe. It's so easy. It's called melt, chuck a few things in and then in the oven. Now that's what I call enough technique for me. All right, so that's looking great. Now what we do is back in again for one more minute on medium low. I've got my oven on. It's on 180. Damn it. Back to four. One minute. My oven's on 180, preheated, ready to go. And it takes about 50, 55 minutes to cook this cake. Really depends on your oven though. You know, sometimes if you've got a hot oven, maybe check it at 45 just to make sure. Now, with this particular blueberry white chocolate mud cake, you can change it. And I often do that for, like, for example, my son in law, Chris. He had his birthday last week and he requested this cake, but he loves it with frozen raspberries. And so it becomes white mud cake with raspberries. I mean, it is pretty fabulous. Now, I haven't got my frozen raspberries out, um, blueberries out. Yes, have you noticed? And that's because I find when using frozen berries, particularly blueberries, because they have such a purple colour, that when you, if it's started to melt, it will kind of leach into the white mixture. So then you kind of get a little bit of a purple cake. So I always put any of the frozen berries in at the last minute because then they, sh they hold their shape as well. So there's another fabulous tip. So you've got the... Me. All right, so this should be perfect now. And it is. I'm just going to give that, just combine it. So everything's lovely and melted. Perfect. Now, it's a little bit warm because it's been in the microwave. And so what I do to help cool it down is this is when I put the apple sauce. Now, I always use the little, the baby apple because it's the perfect amount and it doesn't have sugar added to it. Um, if you make it yourself, then I often say to people, look, that's okay. I mean, because I'm all about quick and easy, but just make sure it's the same um, consistency or texture as the baby apple because if it's really thick, um, it's not going to work as well. Now, I'm going to put half a teaspoon of... Um, uh, bicarb in there. Just mix that up and you'll see that it will start to froth and that means your bicarb's activated and this is what helps uh, give uh, texture to, to the mud cake and another way of uh, getting moisture in there without adding fat. This is something I created back in book one for those of you had ever thought to use baby apple did they all right so let's throw that in a bin just mix that through awesome now what we do is add in the egg whites now we've saved 12 grams of fat straight up by not using the yolk and it doesn't really add anything to the recipe. If it did, I'd put it in. So there's another tip that how you can save a lot of fat by just thinking about what you put in, does it need to be in there? And of course, you know, using the fluorolite margarine and having a little bit less chocolate in there that maybe you would normally have in it, I still think this is gonna be a fabulous um, option for you because it's healthy. As healthy as I could do a mud cake, let's put it that way. Beat that all together. And then all I've got to do, add one and three quarter cups of the plain flour and a little bit of vanilla essence. 
it's grey. So I'm just going to put in um, half a teaspoon of vanilla essence. I probably should have put that in then, but I forgot. But I remembered in the end. So that gives it a lovely flavour. I've got other mud cakes in the, in the books, you know. This is not the only one. I've got in book three, I have got a chocolate mud cake, which I think I've done on the show before. Have I done it on the show before, guys? I think, oh, they're going, I think I did. Uh, there, there's also a caramel mud cake in book six. So there's caramel, chocolate and white. So enjoy. All right, so now I've put in the plain flour, remember, one three quarters cup. And then just, I've got this on my lowest speed. And I'm just going to feed that in. So this is a difficult rating of two, but it's not that hard. And it's enough for 12 slices. So everything in moderation is okay. But I tend to make this cake for birthdays. There we go. So let's just put these over in the sink. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wash my beaters because I need them for the icing. So they're all washed. Now the last thing is the blueberries. Now Bill's kindly got them out of the freezer for me. Three quarters of a cup frozen blueberries. And then I'm just going to fold that in. See, they're holding really well. They're not leaching out because they're so frozen. And that's perfect. Now I've just got to pour it into the cake mix. Into the, the pipe, or what do you call it, the cake tin. Oh my gosh. It smells great because you can really smell the white chocolate. There we go. That's all done. In the oven. Now I'm going to put my timer on 50 and check it then and come back to it if it needs a little bit more. All right, so let's chuck this over in the sink. Now, because of the wonders of television, oh my God, look at the mess I've made over my fabulous book. I am going to show you the end result. Here we go. Made this this morning so I could show you how fabulous it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to just quickly whip up the icing. Now I'm sure you all know how to make icing so I'm not going to talk too much about it but generally speaking um, with my recipes just follow what it says and just mix that up. I don't always make it really thick with the icing because this is where a lot of the uh, calories and carbs come from is icing. And I like to, um, I just think, you know, there's no point doing thick icing on it. There's enough flavour coming from here. So I put in two teaspoons of skim milk, teaspoon of fluorolite, and what's that, how much icing is it? It's three quarters of a cup. All right, so now let's get that icing out. Oh my gosh. How fantastic would someone feel if you pop this in front of them and sang them happy birthday? I know I'd be a bit happy about that. So we're just gonna spread this around. And in the recipe it tells you how to make the icing, of course, but also what it does include is five grams of the chocolate grated, because I think it's nice, makes it look pretty. So here's my white chocolate. Oh yes, look at that, now we're talking people. Now how much fat's in this? Not 45 or 50 to the traditional one, my version is six. How good is that? I'm going to throw a couple of blueberries, you know, fresh blueberries on the top. Don't put frozen because they'll melt onto it. 
Gosh, you know what? It looks a little bit like the picture. Let's have a look. Here we go. Same. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to cut it right down the middle at the front here so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Here we go. Oh, there's a blueberry come out. Stick that there. So there you go. There is my gorgeous version of white mud cake with blueberries. Now, if you want to win this book, and yes, you know you do, it's easy. All you've got to do is like, like the page, share, comment. Don't break the bowl. And then in the comments you write, hashtag simply too good. So that's S-Y-M-P-L-Y-T double uh, T good. Simply number two good. Now if you put that in, I will randomly pick three fabulous people for next week to win book four. So how good is that? Now next week's show is going to be great because I want to really start talking about getting ready for Christmas. I know, I know, I had to say the word, but it's about all the parties coming up. We're going to get lots of social gatherings coming over the next couple of months. So I want to prep you up a little bit, give you some really good tips. So that's what I'll be talking about next week. So do not miss it. I mean, who knew weight loss could be so deliciously healthy? I say put the kettle on and here comes bliss on a fork. Thanks for joining me. Go to my website too because you're going to get lots of other recipes and tips there. www.simplytogood.com.au Thanks for joining me guys. Take care. Have a great week.